Good morning, everyone. So in this talk, we're interested in interactive visualization of large unstructured volumes. Uh, these volumes typically come from large finite element simulations, and although they're relatively easy to render offline, it's really challenging to render these large unstructured volumes interactively. Part of this difficulty comes from the size of the simulations that we're seeing. As simulations improve, uh, we get a lot more elements that we'd like to visualize, and so it's really important that whatever method you're using to render that unstructured data is that it scales really well with respect to data size. Um, unfortunately, the traditional method that people use to render unstructured volumes is rasterization, where you have to sort a bunch of elements from front to back whenever you move the camera around. And if you're sorting 20 to 40 gigabytes of unstructured volume um, elements, that can really quickly become a bottleneck. Uh, so as an alternative, you can use ray casting, where you, um, tr uh, you trace a set of view-aligned rays through the volume and take a bunch of point queries along those rays. Uh, however, if those point queries get expensive, then that can limit your interactivity or the quality that you get from your volume rendering or both. So for unstructured volumes, we want to make these point queries as efficient as possible to give us as much interactivity that we can get um, while maintaining some quality that's acceptable. And luckily, our prior work that we published at HPG shows that you can actually leverage the ray tracing cores found in NVIDIA Turing GPUs to accelerate both the acceleration structure traversal and the point and element tests that are required for uh, point queries on unstructured volumes. But still, uh, more can be done to improve the performance of a direct volume ray caster. We can also reduce the number of samples that we take along each of these rays that we're casting. So uh, here I'm showing an image on the left, which is like a heat map that's showing how much work we're doing per pixel. And we want to make that image as dark as possible because that means uh, we're getting more interactivity. So the first technique that we can use is empty space skipping, where we avoid taking samples in the volume that are completely transparent and don't affect the final image. And then the second technique we can do is adaptive sampling, where we adapt the sampling rate to the underlying data variation. Um, and so you can kind of think of this like important sampling on, an, on a volume. And both of these techniques together can really drastically improve the performance of a direct volume rate caster. Um, but still, there's still uh, there's some challenges that we run into when trying to implement these techniques on unstructured data. Uh, the first is that we can't assume we have a regular grid, and most existing techniques make that assumption. Uh, the second thing is we have two forms of empty space that we'd like to skip. Uh, there are elements that are entirely transparent, which we just don't want to sample, but we also have these large void regions because the data is sparse. And we want to be able to skip both of those. And then um, any overhead that we introduce is uh, really important to like watch. We want to make sure that overhead is really low, otherwise else it might overshadow any of the performance benefits that we get uh, from the reduced sampling. So with that being said, in this work, we propose a method which uses ray tracing to impl implement both empty space skipping and adaptive sampling to work on unstructured data and without introducing significant overhead. So given an unstructured mesh, we build a KD tree over the mesh elements to partition them into a set of convex disjoint regions. For each region, we compute the minimum and maximum of the scalar field and the corresponding transfer function maximum and opacity, or sorry, the transfer function maximum, opacity, and color variance. So uh, here, this gray region is entirely transparent. The blue regions have very low variation in their data, in their scalar field, and then the red regions have very high variance. We then use hardware accelerated ray tracing to iterate rays through the active partitions, skipping any transparent ones in any unoccupied space. So here these red dots are samples that we don't have to take because we know that we can skip them. Then within each partition, we use the local data variance to adapt the sampling rate to the underlying data. Um, and then uh, this sampling rate is um, controlled by a user-specified minimum and maximum sampling rate. We interpolate between that minimum and maximum sampling rate based on the variance in those partitions. And this process iterates until either a rate reaches maximum opacity or it exits the bounds of the volume. So to evaluate our approach, we tested on a variety of different data sizes. Our first data set is this smaller JETS data set, which has 12 million tetrahedra. We have this medium-sized data set, uh, which has 35.7 million tetrahedra and is roughly three times larger than our uh, small testing data set. Then we have this larger uh, TAC Japan earthquake data set, 
which is 278 million tetrahedra and is about eight times larger than our medium data set. It's about 30 gigabytes in memory. And then finally, we tested on this impact data set, which has 366 million tetrahedra and is about 10 times larger than our medium sized data set. It's about 37 gigabytes in memory. As far as hardware goes, we chose to use an RTX 8000, uh, primarily because it has a lot of memory. It has 48 gigabytes, and um, we can fit all of these data sets onto that GPU. But for our smaller data sets, we see roughly similar performance that I'll uh, present in a second um, on more uh, consumer-friendly GPUs like a 2080. And then for our software stack, we're using Optic 6 and CUDA 10. So to test some real-world examples, we compare our baseline recasting method with the hardware accelerated point queries on the left uh, against our newly adaptively sampled recasting method in the center, and then show a normalized structural similarity image on the right. So we're trying to see any error that we're getting from adaptive sampling on the right. So on this Agulhas data set, we see roughly a 3.5x performance improvement by adaptively sampling it and an empty spacing skipping on it, but we're also preserving details in the high variance regions in the center of the volume. Um, we do see some error, though, on like medium variance areas, although since, like, remember, the image on the right is normalized, and so we're being really picky about any error that we see. Then on this Japan earthquake data set, we see roughly a 7x performance improvement, and that's largely because there's a large portion of that volume which have very similar data values that you can very adaptively sample. Um, and we are preserving details in like high variance regions, but here we also see some issues in medium variance. And finally, we compared our uh, approach on uh, by just using space skipping versus just using adaptive sampling versus combining the two. And we show that uh, the overhead incurred by our technique is lower than any performance benefits that we get on even our smaller data sets, but it depends on the data type. So on, on the left, there's a lot of empty space that we can skip, so we go from 4 to 20 frames per second in that case, but adaptive sampling doesn't do as well there. Versus on the right, uh, and there's not as much empty space that we can skip, but there's a lot that we can adaptively sample, so the adaptive sampling there works better. So. Uh, to summarize, in this paper we present a new strategy for empty space skipping and adaptive sampling. Our approach works on unstructured data and leverages ray tracing hardware to uh, reduce any overhead. And on our data sets, we see up to a 7x performance improvement. And then as far as future work goes, we'd like to make some of the parameter selection a bit easier. We like to test on a couple different types of data sets. And then um, we'd like to test on more frameworks. Although uh, we're currently using optics, we might be able to use some CPU libraries as well. So uh, with that, I'm done. Thank you for listening, and I can try to take any questions.